Hi, uh, Dr. Shankopotamus here, and we are working on the 2009 9-11 uh, Turbo. It's the 9971 Turbo. Uh, 2009, the last year, they put the Metzger engine in. Nice little car, a lot of fun to drive. You're gonna need a couple things. We're gonna be putting new O2 sensors in here. Um, let me show you what we got here. I'm sorry to move the camera in just a little bit on you. Here you go, sorry about that. Must step in front, sorry about that too. But a couple things you need, sorry about that. There we go. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is what you're after if you're working on this car. It has taken uh, quite a bit to get these silly things. So it's the Bosch 17310. Online, it'll say the Bosch 17222 works, okay? So I actually have already done this once. I put the 17222s in there because I could not find this one to save my life, it seemed like. It looks like the right sensor. It's got the right connector. I'll show you when I pull it out. It's got a longer attachment than this particular one does. This is, this is more like the stock. If this doesn't work, I'm gonna have to just switch it out for Porsche ones. But this little bad boy, about 140 bucks on eBay. Porsche, the cheapest I can find those is $273 each. So yes, I'm gonna try the correct Bosch, even though online Bosch says the 7222 works and my car doesn't. It's giving errors on both um, bank, bank one and bank two, sensor one. Sensor one is in front of the catalytic converter, sensor two is behind the catalytic converter. Sensor two is working just fine, and I replaced those as well when I was doing the 60,000 mile service on this little bad boy. So, um, we're gonna go in there, I'm gonna show you how you get these O2 sensors out, how you put your new ones in. Couple things that you're gonna need um, to get started. Uh, you need your, there you go. You need your homebrew, let's see here. Yeah, you, you got to get your homebrew in a nice frosty glass. That is real glass. I'm going to be really careful. That's my last big goblet there from college. Uh, I don't want to break that bad boy. It's the only one I got um, after having a few of them. And then you got to get your, your UE Boom over here. Everybody makes fun of the um, Shankopotamus music, but you know, it is what it is. That's Miss Shankopotamus coming in and just kind of interrupting the whole video and yelling, but that's okay. She's a sweetheart. We'll take that. All right, so the first thing you want to do on this car when you're doing the... Um, O2 sensors, you gotta get the wheels off. So we'll start there. Daniel. All right, so uh, wheels are off. This little thing's kind of handy to have for getting the wheels off. I also have somewhere back there, let's see, I'm doing a little camera moving around, sorry. Way back there, there you can see the top of that yellow canister back there. That's my air, a big old DeWalt compressor. So I can do it also with a, with a compressor, but th this little thing's just handy. Here's what you want to, if you do any kind of work on cars and you value your wheels at all, get yourself a set of, I don't know what you call them, plasticized? Is that the word? I don't know, anyway. Got a plastic coating on them. They've got a magnet and they're spring loaded inside of here. So when you put the lug into there, boom, or, I mean the screw. These don't actually use lugs, these screws. Um, and then it's non-marring surface here. You won't scratch up your paint job or scratch up your wheels. Really nice um, thing to have. So the wheels are off. Let me uh, get you all over here, because we need to, uh, sorry for the movement. Oh, walk by the homebrew here first. Trying to break the homebrew bottle. Ah, trying to get grease off the homebrew in your bottle either. I mean, in your cup. But anyway, we're moving around. Sorry for the movement, but I just wanna show you how we do it. We're gonna go whoop, right up in here. I said the wheels off. Another cool thing, if you're bleeding your brakes, out first, in next. Just did that too, 60,000 mile for service. Should have been it, but it didn't. Okay, so you got these little screws. Porsche uses these little screws all over the place. Back in here, up in here, okay. So this panel has to come off on both sides. That gives you access to a screw that is up in here, okay. Now, because what you're after in order to get to the O2 sensors, once I take the um, car up a little further and show you. Obviously, it's a muffler, right? There's exhaust, right? Well, the muffler is actually across the back underneath here, and your um, catalytic converters are right in here, and that's your problem. Now, on the turbo, you also have intercoolers. I'm gonna look and see if I can get to the O2 sensors without taking these intercoolers off. It may, it'd be a really nice step to avoid. Um, the first time I did it, I took them off to get access to just everything easily. I'm gonna try it without, we'll see how it looks. But you're after this, okay? I've already popped the truck back here. Whoa, here we go. These little bad boys are really compact up in here. Here's a little thing I just did. 
should have a video if we'll put it up i replaced the oil fill the fuel sorry the fuel filter up in there whoop up in there up in here um and since i didn't trust myself i put the towel down there it's not causing any trouble but i was like i'm gonna drive this thing with a towel for just a little bit make absolutely sure this silly thing is not leaking any kind of fuel but that's one thing you're doing with the fuel filters on just make sure you're not leaking any kind of fuel and i know that's a silly little thing but that's what i did um, so anyway, and I've got upgraded um, intakes on here. Um, oil filter, oil fill. Okay, but you're after this. You're going to have screws across here on yours. If you open it up, you should have a screw with each one of these. Um, I'm not really missing the screws. Kind of I am. Um, these are specially designed little screws with a little um, ridge on them so that they don't rub like they've rubbed pretty bad against some of the plastic here or compress the plastic and crack it. Okay, so somewhere along the way somebody had worked on this and taken off the screws that belong here and either lost them or did something else with them. Um, I had a couple of them left, so I put them here and up underneath the fenders, okay, and I've ordered new ones that should be in like tomorrow or so. But anyway, okay, I'm going to pull those panels off on both sides that I just showed you in the fender well, and then we'll look again, okay? All right. I got the um, fender wells off there, the in inner covers, I guess you'd say. Show you a couple things here. So the, here's your difference. If you can see, see the little notch on that one, or the little, the raised area on that one? Those are the screws that go around to hold your bumper cover and your other plastic pieces on. A little ridge that you have right there keeps you from squishing, very technical term, squishing the uh, plastic and then you'll crack it up. The, the other ones that go in most places are just flat on the bottom like this. Now, with that said, there's a very similar screw that actually goes up underneath and holds the panels up on the bottom. And th that screw has little ridges in them. I don't have one out right now because I didn't take them off, but it's got little ridges all the way around on the on the flange there. I guess that's the flange, right? The other thing is the size. These little guys are 25 Torx, okay? And these slightly wider guys with the little neck or the little protecting rim kind of thing on them, um, those guys are 30s. Always nice to have a few, this OTC. I think it off Amazon, not too bad. Holds up really well. Um, and a set of Torx there, it's really handy. All right, so our next, um, our next step now is I'm going to uh, remove the uh, lights on the back end. I'll show you all how this works, okay? So you come on up into here. Sorry for moving the camera around, but it's, you know, it's how it is. Let me zoom in up in here for you because I'm still carrying this other stuff around. There's two screws. I was scratching my paint. There's two screws, one there and one there, okay? They don't have to come off. This just this slides out. They just have to come loose. Now when this slides out, you've got an electrical connect from the back. When I get it off, I'll show you how it works. You just punch your thumb in down on one side and pop, snap, crackle. And there it is, it's off, okay? So there's another Torx here. I think this is a 25 that's in there. It may be a 30, but anyway, you want to get a hold of this little bad boys here. Let me get the light on there. There you go, you know that little bad boy with the Torx. Let me zoom in, let me do a little zoom. Oh yeah, oh yeah, there it is, oh yeah, okay? I'm going to take those off on both sides and disconnect the, the wiring to them. Um, and then we should be able to go after the bumper. Bumper cover, sorry, the bumper cover. All right. All right, so you can see we've got the, the two screws off, and they were 25 torques. We'll take them off. Okay. And then the, the, uh, the light just slides right out, just like that. You'll notice behind it, it is connected, which makes perfectly good sense, right? It's going to be connected. I find it easier to flip it over to get your thumb onto this piece right here. Push down hard and supposedly, there he goes, it pops out. There it is, okay? So now he's off, you see, look at the flat side right here, look at the back side right here, about me, sorry, uh -huh. okay. Um, and then this little piece right here, you just push, comes off. Um, there he is. Ta-da. So do the same thing to the other side, and uh, we're moving right along here. 
Okay, so we're looking up underneath the uh, fender well here. All right, so if I swing out, you can see, all right, there's where we are. Intercooler right there. Intake, well, actually, the intake, the intake for the intercooler. The bypass, the blow by air. Um, and up underneath here, there is screw, very similar to what we had outside, right here, going up. Okay, so that's the first one you gotta take off. Well, not the first one, but I'm gonna take it off first. Um, and then when you look, I've got the car up a little higher. Sorry for moving around here, but when you look up underneath, here we go. Ta da! Okay, you see them over there. I don't know if it'll focus, but you see them right there. Okay, so you take all those off all the way across the bottom. I think looking at where these O2 sensors actually are, I cannot do this without taking the intercooler right there, without taking those bad boys off. I don't think, but. Let's get the rear bumper cover off and uh, let's see how it looks. All right, so one little thing I forgot to mention here are these pieces. Let me get my light up there for you. There you go. Little screws right here. Up in the corner where the, lot, where the uh, tail lights are. Let's see here. There you go. Oh, good. Got a good picture there. And um, there's little plastic screws with inserts. Unscrew the little plastic screw, pull the insert out. There's one on each side. Um, then you're ready to come off with the, with the bumper cover, but just want to point out there's one more set of plastic little uh, screws up here to take out. All right, so I'm gonna show you this comes off. Hopefully, I did this before with only one person. So I think we can do it again with only one person, um, which is me. So anyway, we're gonna see. Start to lift up. It's got, a slide, it's got a piece here that slides in around the side. You want to pull it out. Okay. I don't know if you can see that, but it slips out. Yeah, you can see that. It slips out over there. Okay. I just had a face reveal there. Whoops, I almost stepped on my cord. I got a cordless mic, I do believe, to finish, really do this thing. Same thing on this side. It just comes out. Okay, it's going to slip out. There we are. We're out. And be very careful because this scratches easily, okay? Scratches easily. And then once you've got it out, you can just start coming straight back. Be very really careful with it. You have an electrical connection in here. What I do is set it on the bumper and against my knee, okay? You might not see it out back out of the picture, but I've got it against my knee. You push down on this one just like you do on the lights. And it will eventually come out, I promise. This shows how everything does not go as smooth as planned, but there it is. So down the thumb and out it comes. Be very careful. And you're gonna wanna bring it on back. And there it is. So it's definitely something that one person can do fairly easily. One person can get that off. Set it back out of the way, out of your workspace. If you don't have a nice smooth floor or you might Got a concrete floor that might scratch it and you need to put it onto something. This floor's done and pretty smooth, very, very smooth. Actually, almost slippery smooth despite putting the anti slip into the coating I put on it. But anyway, there you have it. So that's the uh, bumper covers off. Now we got to worry about, let me get a look over here. Now we got to worry about the intercoolers, I do believe. I'm going to raise the car back up and take a quick look underneath, but I think intercooler has got to come off to get to that O2 sensor. Let's um, put the car up a little higher on the lift and go look see. All right, so looking up underneath there, I think you can see back through there, can you? Eh, maybe not, heck. Anyway, back through this nice dark hole are your O2 sensors. Um, one up here towards the front, another one far in the back. You, just, you can't do this without taking the intercoolers off. It's just maybe but way too much of a hassle. So, for your intercoolers, you're going to come off the hose clamp here, okay? And then you're going to disconnect it from the body here, here, from the um, heat shroud here, okay? And the heat shroud underneath. Let me show you this. Get a look here. This is missing one. I've ordered a new one. It just came the other day to put it down, to connect it up. Here's the connector for the back, okay? So those have to come off so you can get the heat shield out of the way. 
and then one a couple of other screws you got to get at you got a screw here that is um, the the support for your intercooler you got a screw up top here okay and you got a screw here all right now you're gonna also have to disconnect your hose this is your intake hose this is what happens is if you know about these cars or what's going on I'll waste a little time with explaining what's going on um, this is your turbo right here a super cool dynamic turbo the first dynamic turbo ever in a production uh, vehicle from 2009 and the turbos I think the turbos are four or two but anyway dynamic it spins almost z it spins almost nothing at low rpms and low flow as the flow glow goes up the blades begin to flip out as the blades flip out they catch more of the flow the faster the flow the higher the blades the faster the turbo so the the turbo boost on this car is related to the actual rpms which is related to the speed of the exhaust so as the exhaust speed increases the turbo speed increases that rams your intake air it's coming in through here okay it's sucking it in through our filter in the back way up there that we saw okay run it through up through here okay this and I'll show you looks it looks like a radiator okay but this is your intercooler air is going this way through your inter intercooler okay and then coming down through there with the with the veins and everything to cool it off is this air that's coming from the outside that's why you have these intakes right here these are not just for show on the uh, 911 turbo these intakes are for the intercooler air comes up above the fender wheel down through this intake which has been changed out for carbon fiber nice little intake here through here and out the back end oh wait i can show you the intercooler see it almost looks like a radiator see that and air is flowing through here while at the same time air is going up this way up this way is the intake air okay and we saw it was going in here right in here up boom that way okay goes through this whole thing and these are enlarged intakes than what was on the actual car alpha intakes here up into the engine okay so that's your uh, intercooler intake lesson for today you can skip all that if you want to but i think the engineering is kind of cool being an engineer myself i really love the engineering especially these german cars and that's probably enough babbling about that maybe not well, you know y'all see my videos i love to talk i mean the videos are about fixing stuff it's about talking about crap too and sharing crap and hopefully when i'm dead and gone you guys can look at this crap but it's great crap but anyway maybe not so anyway gotta have the intercooler off up in here and uh, i show you the screws that i'm going to take off all the way around and then this little bad boy just drops right out once all the screws are off this thing drops right out i added these to this one too i'm not even sure if the factory one looks like this it's over there in that box i guess i could go check it out and see what the factory one looks like but it's in that box way over there okay i don't know so anyway i'm gonna get our intercooler off of here and then you'll be able to see the o2 sensor back behind there perfectly okay okay so here's how we look with the intercoolers off there's our intake there's what's whoops wait some oh, right there coming off the turbo okay a couple things you got the heat shield here just kind of pull out a little bit it's kind of flexible stuff you can lift up um, I think that's easier to do if you want to go in and take take it off it's got a screw here and it's got a screw here I'll tell you from prior experience getting this silly screw back on because the turbo is really in your way is a pain in the fanny so I'm gonna do it this time just with unscrew in here this is your O2 sensor that you're after this is the pre cat O2 sensor the, the mufflers are back here see right here's the muffler back in here and your exhaust so this is the post cat sensor I got this adapter on here because I have oversized um, exhaust on here extra 40 to 50 horsepower for um, the oversized cats and exhaust and if you don't put this spacer on here your CEL you're gonna get CEL hits all the time CEL sorry I'm um, check engine light hits all the time when nothing is actually wrong but that's just happened to this one I'm getting check engine lights both sides at the same time fairly certain it's because it's the wrong sensor even though Porsche even though a Bosch says it works so I'll get a hold of this see when this is all off how much easier it is to get a hold of that just with a regular wrench and just take that puppy right off of there um, so let me let me get on that and um, I'll show you from up top uh, where you disconnect it 
Okay, so we're up here in the back again. And um, let me get this light down in here. I was kind of hoping to not have to do this, but here is, yep, here's the one you're after on this side is the front one, okay. On the opposite side, I do believe, yes, it's the one towards the rear, right there, okay. And I was hoping I'd have to do this, but I think it's going to be easier to run this wire if I pull off the air box. I'm going to take off the cover for the air box, the way that you change the air filter. Let me show you how to do that real quick. Um, and I'll see what we got. Th this cover that's on the air filter here, this little bad boy, Rachel, it ju just pull up. It just lifts right up. Let me show you. Boom, there it goes. You can feel it come off. Boom, there it is. There it is. He just lifts right up. He's got some snaps. See on the bottom there? And over there? That kind of just snap right in. Um, that's how you replace your filter. There's your air filter right there. All the way across. So that's how you do that. And then uh, your air filter screws out and get some little screws in right here. I'm pointing with a with my piece here. All right. So uh, I'm going to see if I got enough room as I take the air filter off. Yeah. I just might without taking the air box. Sorry about that. Y'all are, are looking over there. I might have enough room to work with that wire without taking the air box itself off. I'm going to try that. So as you can see, we are in over here and tighten down. Zooming out. Now, one thing with putting it in, it was a little bit of finagling to, to do it without taking the... Um, you know the air box here off but that's okay um, you can still do it and we are connected back up sorry for swiggling around but this thing does not want to go where I want it to go there we go you can see we're hooked back in okay and hopefully this is gonna fix my problem um, one important thing do not plug it in until you get it um, screwed in down at the bottom you don't want to twist this wire uh, at all. You want to make sure this wire stays untwisted. And the way you do that is feed the um, sensor wire through from the bottom. Don't feed the sensor from the top. Okay? If you feed the sensor from the top, you're liable to bump it on something, hit something, and damage the sensor. Another thing, if you drop the sensor, you can't use it. You could actually crack the ceramic inside of it, and it's ruined. There is um, anti-seize that's usually on these sensors it should be sensor proof anti-seize or sensor safe i should say anti-seize anti don't get that onto the sensor no matter what even if you use some other sensor safe anti-seize do not get it onto the sensor it can end up ruining your sensor and then you just wasted you know 100 bucks or something like that so anyway so you saw how the intercooler came off right so i'll put the heat chill back down i'll put the intercooler back on and then the uh, same thing's gonna happen on the other side. And then we'll come back and, and see how we're doing. All right, so we are back together on this side. Well, you know, the intercooler's back on. One thing I forgot to say before that I remember from the first time I did this, to get it back on, you really, you've gotta disconnect your hose here. Now, what that does is gives you a little extra room to be able to push it Whoops, let me get down there. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's awful, like cameramanship. Is that a word, cameramanship? I don't know, that's awful. So there it is. So when you're trying to get, you know, here to this bad boy right here, and um, it's really easier if you have a little bit of room to push this hose out, hook this hose up completely, and then slide everything back in. So um, just disconnect here when you hook it back up gives you a little bit of extra room to work with. Okay, so I'm off to the other side. Um, same sort of deal on the other side. Take the same screws off that we talked about. Let's see here. Whoops, is my light out? My light's out. Um, same kind of thing we talked about. Take the screws off here, underneath there, off back here. Just same sort of thing. Drop this one down, switch out the O2 sensor. We'll see how it goes. All right, so we're going to work on the driver's side here. And um, as you can tell, it's morning time now. I had to take a break and finish cooking dinner and uh, wasn't able to get back around to finishing this last night with cooking dinner and everything. But I did um, get this sensor one off here, which is pre-cat, like I said on the other side. I'm gonna feed, here's 
hopefully the proper one that we're after okay and I'm gonna feed the uh, connector up first if you can avoid it don't feed the um, sensor down you know pumping stuff hitting stuff and may do some damage don't take this cover off until you're ready I'm gonna take it off though just to show you most of the sensors already come with some anti-seize on here this is should be sensor safe anti-seize but don't get this up on your sensor anyway um, if you're going to apply your own anti-seize just right along some of the threads here and be sure you don't get it up on the end it's nice to keep it protected with this if you ever drop these the manufacturers recommend throw them away so you don't want it banging you don't want it hit you don't want it knocking around but i'll be able to feed you can see right here i'll be able to feed this bad boy just right up through here and reach over the top with my hand pull it up and connect and um, before you connect it and make that point before you connect it go ahead and screw this in down so you can twist this as it screws okay you don't want to have your cord all screwed up into a thing that was one thing with one on here they had screwed it in without turning the cord as they screwed and the cord had a couple of bad kinks in it and that can really cause you trouble with the conduction and with the, the read off the O2 sensor so I'll go ahead and put him in tighten him down and um, we put the uh, intercooler back on you can see where it's hooked there and then the fenders and everything go back on it's pretty straightforward it goes back on just the way it came off I'm not gonna do a whole video put it all back together but um, I'll feed this one through tighten it down and then I'll put everything back on start her up and we should be good to go we should be golden so it's another Dr. Shankopotamus video there putting the um, O2 sensors onto the 2009-911 Porsche uh, Turbo and um, as always if you enjoyed this and it was helpful to you then please give it a little okay thumbs up whatever we do there I don't know what happens um, but also subscribe that helps me too anyway you guys take care have a good afternoon